Sanji versus Eustace Captain Kid. Now I wasn't gonna make this video because prior to this, prior to chapter 1079, I'm pretty sure it was a consensus that everybody believed Kid was stronger than Sanji. It probably still is a consensus right now, but I see a lot of Sanji fans trying to fight back because they don't want a guy that looks like this. Oh my god, bro. Oh hell no, man. What the fuck, man? Get your ass on, boy. Over there, boy. Like, like you know, it just it just doesn't feel right. I don't like putting kid above Sanji. It feels kind of dirty because that boy's a bum. <laughs> seriously, seriously. Okay, I know, I know Sanji would get one shot by Shanks. What, what he? <laughs> I, I, I saw skeleton? Question mark? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I usually want to make this video, but it's just remembering that panel, remembering what Morge said on Twitter because this guy was low key spitting. The circumstances in which he got his win against Big Mom is kind of iffy as well. Like, Big Mom not using advanced Congress hockey, her getting blown up, her being one of the most incompetent characters in the series, and now him getting one shot. I feel like all that piled up together is allowing me to somehow cheese a debate with Sanji versus Kid. <laughs> Now listen, before we talk about feats and we get into the nitty gritty, I just want to let you guys know that I still have kids strong in the Sanji portrayal wise. I'm a person who values portrayal over the feats majority of the time. Unless you have a title, and at that point, that portrayal don't matter. <laughs> you guys know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I can cheese a debate here comparing feats. I'm going to give you guys my best arguments, so make sure you guys leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know what you guys think down below. So how this is going to work is that I'm going to talk about each of them in each category, and I'm going to assign a winner for each category. So first, let's start with strength. So there's two noticeable things I want to talk about when it comes to kid's strength, and the first one is that he was able to break Big Mom's bones. Now with this scene, a lot of people like to say, oh my god, it was just a lot because he had a way flash your attack he's hitting directly inside of big mom and big mom made the comment that oh my god trafalgar your ability is so crazy the whole notion and logic around this attack was that it's a combo attack law was meant to go first and kid was meant to go second so that he could combo and do enough damage on big mom to where they can break her bones that's why kid and law were having this argument who goes first and who goes second and right after law did shock willie we see kid hit big mom with the corner deal his bullet attack and at that moment her arm was not broken Broken. So it's obvious that Kid played a major part in breaking Big Mom's bones. Kid's best feat is obviously using his damn punk. And in this fight, he was able to use damn punk in order to damage Big Mom to the point where she coughs up blood. And he's able to overpower Big Mom with damn punk to the point where this lady can't even get up. There is moments where he did have a power struggle with Big Mom. But then again, he was able to overpower her once again with damn punk and throw her through Onigashima all the way onto Wano. And then the bombs did the rest. Kid was able to significantly damage Big Mom who has some of the best durability in the series. And I know this is not a crazy feat and I know this feat doesn't necessarily tell how strong your attacks could be. He did get some recognition believe it or not in chapter 1079. Shanks sees the future and he sees that Kid was about to use his damn punk in order to destroy nine of Shanks's fleets. Even Shanks was sweating at one point concerned of Kid's devastating power that he was gonna use in order to destroy all those ships. Now let's move on to Sanji. Sanji before he unlocked it for Jambe didn't really have any impressive damage feeds. I would emphasize that he barely did any damage before he awakened I should say. Even the queen makes a remark that yo you gotta do better than that if you want to defeat us all stars because we're known for our toughness. So Sanji wasn't doing anything but then. Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. But everything changed when he unlocked Ifrit Jambe. He went from doing no damage to Queen to completely annihilating him with his combo attack where he said a whole bunch of French and beat the shit out of him and sent him flying to Wano. We can't really gauge how strong Sanji's attack power is here because, because Queen absolutely got destroyed with little to no resistance. It was like a low diff. And knowing Sanji's skill set and the moves he used in the Yabli Jambe, I wouldn't be surprised that he has more moves up his sleeve that he hasn't showcased yet. As impressive as Ifrit Jambe is, I have to give Kid who played a part in breaking Big Mom's bones, as well as using damn punk in order to damage and overpower Big Mom, I have to give him the strength category because he just has the better feats on a stronger and more durable opponent. Sanji, I have to use speculations, which I'm gonna try to avoid. Next thing is 
speed. Kit doesn't really have good speed feats here. The only speed feats we could kind of talk about is what he's done against Big Mom. And to be honest, blitzing Big Mom is not really a feat I'm going to use. Her reaction time is one of the worst I've seen in the series. People do whatever the fuck they want to Big Mom. <laughs> Here's the best moment I have for Kid when he used a sign. This is clearly indicating that he blitz Big Mom right here. But Big Mom is a character who gets caught off guard, who gets blitzed by other characters. Even Zoro at one point was blitzing this girl, but Zoro's fast. That's not to say Zoro isn't fast. She was getting thrown off Onigashima by a rock. <laughs> She sees attacks coming at her, but decides not to dodge them. Like kids damn punked, for example. <laughs> her reaction time and her getting caught off guard and her getting blitzed on multiple occasions is kind of not that impressive to blitz Big Mom. And besides kids fight with Big Mom, I don't really know how I can scale his speed. So since I said a whole lot of nothing for kid, I don't really have to go in depth to prove why Sanji's faster than kid. I think that's a consensus and you guys probably watch Restless Gambler. Sanji was able to perception blitz Queen. To the point where Queen wasn't able to see him at all. And he did this in base. And mind you, Queen is the same person who could perceive a full speed Marco coming right at him while Queen was in his base form. Queen in his hybrid form wasn't able to see Sanji at all who was moving at super high speeds. And Marco is the same character that can move so fast to where he can intercept Kizaru's light attacks at Marineford. Who we deem to be one of the fastest character or the fastest character in terms of travel speed and attack speed. So yeah, and I know there's an instance where Big Mom was kind of able to blitz Marco, but that's not really a testament to his overall movement speed. It kind of just shows that Marco's reaction time wasn't good enough because they were clashing with each other and then Big Mom overpowered him for instance and was able to grab him while being in such short proximity from each other. Sanji's the only character we've seen in the series that was able to perception blitz a character of that stature for that amount of time. And he wasn't necessarily at full speed because we know that the Jambes, Diablo Jambe, and Ifrit Jambe should technically heat up his kicks as well, allowing him to move faster. And even in the recent arc, a funny moment was when S Shark shot a laser beam right at one of the Vegapunks and Sanji intercepted it even after it was fired and was able to save the Vegapunk even before seemingly Zoro noticed that Sanji was right beside him. Sanji has better feats in my opinion and he's portrayed to be a faster character. I don't think in this situation I could just give it to Kid because he fought Big Mom. Big Mom is not the speedy type character and her reaction time is definitely not the best. And she definitely gets caught off guard all the damn time. So for speed, I'll give it to Sanji. Next thing is durability and this is something I can't quantify for Kid. In the fight with Big Mom, he was getting destroyed a couple of times. There was moments where this guy was falling to his doom. There were moments where this guy was knocked out on the floor. His durability was a showcase to be the best in this fight. There is a moment that does hype up his durability a little bit. It was when Big Mom punched him in the face and he just took the attack back on the rooftop. That kind of hyped him up. But besides that, this brother was getting hit by Big Mom's homie attacks. And some of them seemingly knocked him out for a bit. <laughs> so nothing that really hypes up Kid's durability. It's more of his endurance, which we're going to talk about later. But with Sanji, his durability is out of this park, like you guys know. Obviously, Sanji with the exoskeleton makes it so that his body is literally rock hard. Hey, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, obviously Sanji has the exoskeleton. We see how durable he is when Queen tries to swing his sword on Sanji and obviously it breaks. Even in his fight against Queen, he was able to take some enhanced Jerma attacks from Queen and he was able to get right back up from some of them like nothing happened. And another thing that really gassed up Sanji's durability was in the latest arc. When he decided to turn on his demon mode and have a Seraphim who's using Fishman Karate from what it seems, which is durability nag, if you guys don't know what that is, basically bypasses durability and he wasn't able able to damage Sanji. Sanji stood there and let a Seraphim punch him in his face and he took no damage. So Sanji definitely does have better durability feeds and he definitely does have moments where he actually tanks attacks and doesn't seem phased by it. So durability I would give to Sanji. Now endurance. For a kid like I mentioned earlier there was plenty of moments where this guy gets he goes down and he gets back up and continues fighting. There's even a moment where Big Mom does Mama Raid or it could have been Ikaku Sovereignty and he actually ends up getting back up. And that happened more than once 
in this fight he would get knocked out and get back up again and on top of that we know his stamina is constantly being drained by using his awakening in this battle and he's still able to fight enduring all that damage and while his stamina is being drained kid actually endurance wise is a monster since they were able to spam their awakening and take a beating from big mom sanji's endurance he doesn't really have endurance feats it's more about his durability like i mentioned I don't think Sanji will get impressive endurance feats now that he got this buff because the main thing about him is that he won't take a lot of damage. Sanji had to sustain the same amount of damage that Kid has and continue fighting so I'd have to give it to Kid. Now their quick hacks I want to mention before we talk about the final fight is that obviously Sanji has Ifrit Jambe, Diable Jambe, he obviously has his observation hockey which we all know is at a decently high level and he has Arden Mahaki and he has regen. With Kid, he has his awakening, a sign, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> or he's he might have something else that i can't remember but now let's talk about how this fight could possibly go down the fight will start and sandy disappears <laughs> <laughs> as much as i want to do that we're gonna make this an actual fight but we can't all agree that sandy will definitely have the speed advantage to the point where he can dodge whatever he wants from kid as well as land majority of what he wants on kid as well now that i said that can sanji actually do significant damage to kid well yes he can in kid's fight with big mom kid gets hit with some of big mom's regular homie attacks like the kaku sovereignty mama raid and he gets knocked out for a bit and then he comes back and then he gets back up later and these are big mom's single homie attacks or double homie attacks it seems that big mom's fusion homie attacks are stronger than the regular ones one of big mom's ultimate attacks is obviously her mazer saber where she combines all the homies and as well as her best attack that she used against kid in law which was misery so it's safe to say all the homies combined is when she has her strongest attacks she also used all her homies combined against ulti which was the mazer cannon she put down ulti for a little bit but ulti ended up getting back up after and this attack by proxy would scale above some of the attacks that big mom was hitting kid with that knocked him out for a bit and had him looking like this we know queen scales way above ulti just by the hierarchy of the all-stars and obviously their zone durability being their main strength and their endurance that's probably the main reason why they're stronger and queen being the second all-star he should be way stronger than ulti via durability as well and endurance when sanji unlocked it for John B, he was able to completely annihilate queen and ulti who has way less durability than queen was able to get back up after big mom's mazer cannon attack and Big Mom's Mazer cannon attack is stronger than some of the attacks she was using on Kid that knocked him out for a brief moment. Adding those things together, Ifrit Jambi should be able to do some significant damage to the point where he at least looks somewhat like this. Possibly even more. And I know for one of the attacks, Mama Raid, Hawkins was kind of nerfing Kid. He was giving him migraines like he stated. I don't think it's anything too serious because Rose emphasizing it's a migraine. It really doesn't matter because I just already proved to you guys that Ifrit Jambi skills way up above fusion homie attack mazer cannon because he was able to pretty much decimate a way more durable character who has way more endurance while big mom used mazer cannon on a way weaker opponent with way less durability and endurance and that character got back up so i'm not gonna jump the gun here and say kid gets one shot because that's not fair actually we're gonna throw kid another bone let's say kid is actually able to land some attacks on sanji let's say he lands his robotic attacks will it even do anything because as we know, Kid is a character that likes to crush his enemies. Crushing Sanji isn't gonna work. Imagine he tried to use this attack right here. Or imagine he tried to use the bull attack that he used to break Big Mom's bones. These attacks will likely break Sanji's bones. But does that matter? Because we've seen someone break all of Sanji's bones basically. And he regened right after so kid is actually a terrible matchup for sanji the only thing that really matters is his damn punk and would he be able to hit sanji with his damn punk i don't think so unless he uses his awakening a sign and where i do think if he is able to land a sign on sanji he would be able to one shot him with damn punk so that's gonna be the only way kid would have sanji standing in one spot for him to use damn punk punk and ko sanji so this entirety of this fight rests on if kid can land his assign attack which i don't think he can due to sanji's speed and having to worry about his constant barrages of ifrit jambi that are extremely lethal to kid 
So yeah, so yeah, to end this off, Sanji should be able to put down Kid after a couple of hits with Ifrit Jambi, seemingly knocking him out and then finishing him off with whatever he wants. So there's one thing that people like to point out that Kid can just control Sanji's body because he's made out of metal. I don't necessarily agree with that. We don't actually know if Sanji's actually made of metal entirely. Wouldn't he be a cyborg if that was the case? I, I really don't know. And on top of that, let's say he was made of metal. Sanji, he could just use hockey to resist the devil fruit effects like a lot does. There's also that. And on top of that, Kid doesn't even use his powers like that. Kid doesn't go around trying to take every Yonko sword, anybody's weapon. Like he doesn't even fight like that. He didn't even try to do that to big mob like you gonna try to do that to kaido so yeah guys that's pretty much it so let me know what you guys think down below about this matchup it was pretty fun and i'll catch you guys next time peace